Okay, let's try again. Hi guys, I'm Almeria from Worcester, Western Cape, South Africa, not the one in the UK or wherever it is. I know there are quite a few Worcesters out there. Um, yeah. Thank you to all returning viewers and welcome to anyone who's new. And I'm so sorry that this is the first episode in a year. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been a year according to my previous post. I think I did put try and put up some posts in between and it just never... I would make the video and I wouldn't just... I just wouldn't upload it. So many things have happened in a year's time. They always say it's a, a, a lot of stuff can happen in a day. But in a year, a lot of stuff happens. The last time I posted, I think, was when I closed the shop. The, the wool shop and the wool business. A cup of yarn. And um, I have to say it's, it's been a difficult road from there to get where I am now I uh, it, it was harder than I thought it would be actually and I closed the shop um, and then yeah, I don't know things just I didn't know what to do with myself basically and I started drawing again and I think even before I closed the shop I said I wanted to move more towards illustration which I did and I am doing I've got an Etsy shop for that now I'm gonna um, put the link down below I'm doing a lot of sewing not doing a lot of knitting um, crocheting none of that stuff I've got such a ton of yarn here that um, I, th I think I can just crochet a blanket or something. Anyway, I digress. So this video is basically a recap of the past year and telling you guys what I've been up to and what the plans are for the future and what I'm currently busy with and why there will be videos again. <laughs> so let's start with the recap. I basically told you about the recap now. Um, that was just... I mean, we had from this year... January to March, I had this absolutely crazy time. Actually, from December, I was at Blauklippen at that market. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know that. Was at Blauklippen at that market. That was heavy. And then I, um, then January happened, which I, is a total blur. I really can't remember what happened in January. Oh, we went on a supposed week-long holiday in January. I love my husband. I really do. He never watches these videos. But even if he did, he'll know what I'm going to say now. He... If I don't take him out of the country somewhere where there's no... No... Telephone... Mainly Afrikaans for his opvangs. Um, there's no, like, s signal. So we like, I <laughs> can't get to If there's no signal, uh, then he actually takes a holiday. That's, that's when he takes a holiday, when there's no telephone signal. But when there's still telephone signal, eh. Anyway, and then right after that, we went, uh, we were supposed to help out, like we did the previous year in Swanandam. And in, within a week... Um, my aunt was booked into a hospital with a lung abscess and she was really sick and I went and took care of my uncle who has um, vascular dementia but he's actually very uh, um, okay he's still he's very he, but they were at that point he wasn't that okay the, the, the trauma and the stress and the stuff wasn't really didn't go down very well so I was there for three weeks, got home, thought, okay, I'm going to get my head together. And then the next, the, literally, we got home the Monday, no, the, 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 the weekend, 
Monday I said okay I'm still in a bit of a tiz because I have to go back to Tuesday and take my uncle back to the hospital to have his checkups done and then um, Wednesday I thought okay everybody's at work now I'm at home I can get my head together and we get a call that our youngest son was in a um, accident uh, a bicycle accident so and he's okay it's okay he's stressed he's fine um, but it was uh, there's like a lot of stuff you know Afrikaans we call it the klon klein yakasis anyway it was only now in like I think the class say couple of weeks that uh, I was kind of able to get my head back together um yeah so what am I busy with at the moment mostly soap stuff uh, I started a soap business last year in the middle of July August around there um I started making soap for us as a family just damn it soap couldn't get oil we didn't want to buy the oil from shelves anymore I use olive oil um, and yeah I, I had contact here with a farmer who is an olive farmer and he said well let's do business and that's what we're doing but he, I supply him with soap to take to send out to Canada when he needs it and I buy my olive oil from him to make my soaps with and yeah so it's it's getting there slow process I have a contact an agent now and if all goes well I will be able to work through an agent so that I can do the production and not the sales because anybody who has a small business will tell you that that has a production business that you actually make stuff um, making and selling just gets a bit heavy anyway I have also been sewing a lot a lot I've been doing a lot of sewing I've been on this mission for a while now that would have been in my previous episodes already I want my own clothes I want to make my own clothes I'm tired of trying to find clothes that fit me properly on the one hand and on the other hand also that I can afford by the time um, I can afford it or either if I the stuff I can afford is not anything I'm gonna like or I'm gonna wear or will fit me properly the stuff I can afford can, that, that, that do fit me and I sometimes like are too expensive so you know you still make your own stuff and I did uh, uh, you'll see in my previous episodes I talk about Ilya Mac a lot I have registered to be an affiliate with them now um, and that will be in my next episodes you'll see the links for that down below an affiliate link just means if you go through my link to the site and you buy stuff from there I get a cut out of it so that will enable me to buy more patterns and buy fabric to make stuff with said patterns you know so that's what that is about I also I use two companies I mostly use Alien Mac I also have uh, patterns for pirates I think I have one uh, that I use uh, for made by mermaids and you know there are a couple of random ones if I if I use a particular a pattern or whatever and I show it on the channel then I will definitely put the link down below which I will do now I am currently wearing probably won't be able to see it uh, this is a sweater that I made you'll see it's a it's a raglan sweater and it's from a fabric I really don't like so um, I'm wearing it like just a shop bought t-shirt and what you can't see but I'll try and put pictures up I don't know um, is I'm also wearing um, joggers by patterns for pirates so those the, 
in America. They call it loungewear. In South Africa, we call it heistraakleere or um, vinnig kefito heistraakleere. That's what I'm wearing right now with my tackies because this morning I ran to uh, to cop agri to go and buy my dogs their food and then I went to Postnet to get a pattern I'll talk about that pattern now because I'm actually really excited about it um, I'm when I'm finished here I'm going to be tracing the pattern off and um, then I'll be making those pants and I'll be making a t-shirt and the t-shirt I'll be making for, will be a plantain t-shirt that's a free uh, free pattern from Deer and Doe. Now they're a, a French company and they're very expensive so usually I can't buy anything from them. The one thing I can say about both Ellie and Mac and Patterns for Pirates is that they, they uh, the pattern prices are reasonable. So I buy one pattern and I'll, I'll do a more detailed discussion about that in the next episode when I speak about sewing. But I buy one pattern and that pattern has all the sizes in there. This one, um, let me just see quickly. Uh, it's like this is an Ellie Mac pattern piece. Um, it's a cuff. So, in this pattern, every th there, there are sizes from extra small. Let me just sort of fold this up because I can't show you guys the pattern. It's a board pattern and it's not free, but it's also not expensive. Okay, so you'll see right there the smaller size to the larger size. The larger size is a 5X. Um, and it's all on one piece of paper that you print out. So I buy the pattern, uh, it's a PDF file, have it printed out and um, I trace, well most of the time I just cut out my size but I've come to the conclusion now that I should just trace it off so that I can keep the originals. Um, so yeah, those are, I, I've did, the next one I'm going to be doing actually is a Patterns for Pirates one which I mentioned that's, um, it's, it's called the SOS pants SOS pants I'm gonna put a link down below for the pattern the link pattern link and you can go take a look at it um, I wear jeggings in winter a lot and my jeggings sort of you know how jeans work just when you really really find them fantastic and they're at the most comfortable then they start tearing and they start tearing right here where your legs come together there you know anyway I have one pair of jeggings left and I can go buy from a ladies because that's the only company that actually has leg jeggings that fit me properly um, but I thought you know well why not make mine so I make mine hopefully that works so that will be my next, uh, this, that and the t-shirt because I, I'm moving towards, because we're moving towards winter, I'm trying to get my winter wardrobe in some sort of order. And I, I've got a lot of t-shirts and stuff that I got from my aunt or, you know, they like, I, I don't wear them a lot. I wear them underneath stuff or whatever. So yeah, that's my plan. I'm also planning on making a winter version of an Ellie and Mac dress that I've made a lot for summer. So that those are my plans, sewing wise. Knitting. Hmm. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, but I've I've lost a lot of my knitting mojo after I closed the shop. As I mentioned before, I, I just don't feel like knitting. I did um, spin up a bunch of yarn, Moe included, and I started uh, a, like just a top. 
that I really want. I want the top. I think it's going to be a fantastic layering item for winter. And then I'm still busy with the ribbing and somewhere I, I had a piece of the yarn under spun and it sort of broke off. Which is fine normally. You just put it back together. But that's not the problem. The problem is I dropped a stitch somewhere. Can't find it. Anyway. So I'm supposed to be knitting. I promised myself I was going to knit from March so that I have enough for the winter. And I don't. And I'm just not feeling it. So, I guess I must just go scratch around in my stash and find some yarn and, and make the top. Then I'll feel better about myself. Yeah, that's it for now, I think. I think my next cup, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that the next videos will be a bit longer. So this is like a... A recap video and a chatty video I'm not showing anything that's worthwhile um, except my my mug and the fact that I'm drinking Carmin uh, rooibos tea the focus one focus over I love it it's like a masala chai I think um, the next videos I'm gonna try and categorize and split up a bit because otherwise it's gonna get a bit too much and you really can't mix soap and sewing can you well starts both starts with an S so maybe you can but I'm gonna try and make some sewing videos and some soap videos soap I won't do any tutorials on maybe vlogging type things where i'm actually busy with it but but i'm not going to do tutorials on soap there's there are like a ton of soap tutorials out there if you want to look at watch them uh i think i think i mentioned one lady before um anyway she's um, anybody interested in soap i'll send them the link um <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I'm not sick. Dust. Um, so that's the one thing. Um, but I was wondering if anybody would be interested in sewing tutorials, specifically in, Af in Afrikaans. Um, I did start doing some crochet tutorials in the beginning. Yeah. And I did them in Afrikaans. And... I think there's a there's a space for Afrikaans tutorials because there aren't many out there. Don't say so many Afrikaans. Alles gaan Engels te. So, as jy Afrikaanse noodwerk lese wil sien, praat met my. <laughs> then I'll do it. Um, just the basic stuff, really. The very basic stuff about sewing and the stuff that does drive anybody who's starting and who wants to start sewing up a wall it does and and i can honestly say me i i, I never thought i'd sew in my entire life i mean we still did um what do they call it in english i can't remember it's in afrikaans and um I hated sewing. I hated it. I thought I would never touch a sewing machine. I didn't want to knit. I didn't want to do any of those crafts. And it was mainly because the way of the way it was taught to us. It, because we were sort of force-fed stuff. And um, we had to do one specific thing. We weren't allowed to do anything else than what we were supposed to be doing. And as a teacher, I can understand that. Um, but that's not the way most people want to learn something that they're supposed to be enjoying. And, um, yeah, so I, it took me a while to really enjoy sewing. It, it took me a while to really want to sew because of my end product. Because when I put on something and I'm wearing something that I know I made this. This is mine. I made this. 
then it's different. Then I want to sew. So yeah, anyone who wants Afrikaans sewing tutorials, brought me my then begin at Bormia. Okay, for the rest of the day, I hope you have a lovely day. I'm going to be uploading this um, episode as per usual, completely unedited. Like you will see right there behind me is an easel that I also use as a palette. When I've had. Oh, there's another thing I'm busy with. I started doing a lot of in illustrations. I mentioned that right in the beginning. Uh, for the Etsy account for that, I'm going to be adding um, my Etsy account as well um, in the description box. That will probably be a segment on its own as well. All right. Have a lovely day and a great week. Although we're at Tuesday and April in its little short weeks. <laughs> Um, but enjoy, enjoy your day and the rest of your week. Bye.